Well, there's a couple minutes left to go in the uh, Orange Bowl, but the writing's on the wall. And for the Oklahoma Sooners, my byline pretty much states everything you need to know, in case you didn't watch the game. No balance, no win. Today certainly, in no way, shape, or form, erases what was a great season for OU. Okay, no, Nothing changes that. I mean, you, you've got, what, over 60 teams who play in the Power Five conferences, not counting independents like Notre Dame and BYU, and only four teams get this far. So for the Sooners, one heck of a year. But having said that, to get to the national championship game, um, I can't think of a team that gets there if they only are able to run effectively and not pass effectively or pass effectively and not be able to run effectively. And it was the latter um, on Thursday in Miami for the Oklahoma offense. And when that happens, your defense is playing a lot more often than they should. And that's exactly what happened. The Sooners really put themselves in binds in that second half. And the first half was a terrific half of football. If you're looking for a competitive half of football, that first half certainly was. We saw lead changes. We saw momentum shifts. And, you know, the Sooners, maybe entering the third quarter, you thought, okay, Clemson's been able to move the ball effectively. They had several drives inside the Sooner 30, I think five inside the Sooner 30, and they come away with only three field goals and a touchdown. And, by the way, an interception. But unless you are able to make a team as one-dimensional as possible, eventually the writing is going to be on the wall and eventually the inevitable is going to happen. And that is, eventually that team is going to get touchdowns rather than field goals. And they're going to be able to wear you down. Clemson had 300 total yards in that first half. 300, despite being down by a point. And the Sooners had very little running production at all. Okay, And I know what people are going to be saying in the third quarter, P. Ryan got hurt. Okay, the ankle. Of course, Mixon had an injury as well. By the way, P. Ryan did give it another shot, but the bottom line was the ankle, it's been ankle injuries for P. Ryan lately. Even with the extra weeks of rest, his ankle just wasn't going to stand on its own. It just, it just wasn't without some type of resistance, you know, some type of grimacing, pain. Um, it was just too much. The game of football is one in the trenches. It's one up front. And I could brag all about how Wayne Gallman of Clemson was a difference maker you know, because of the fact that, that he got stronger as the game went, and he's an effective blocker out of the backfield as well. And I could talk about how terrific Deshaun Watson was throwing, but more effectively as a runner. Um, he definitely got results, but that he's been doing that all year. But the average football player – in terms of running back or quarterback that's multidimensional, is going to have just as big of a game if the offensive line is doing their part and if they're dominating. You can say, well, Charles Walker didn't play for the Sooners. That hurt. Well, Shaq Lawson played very limitedly. He's a first-team All-American for Clemson. And all he could do was be a supporter on the sideline for his team. The Tigers were still able to play effective defense. Was it a great defensive effort by Clemson? I'm not a Clemson fan, so I don't know what their definition um, of great is of this game compared to others. But I can tell you this, that's not too shabby of a job without their first-team All-American and to really make the Sooners uh, try to move the ball by throwing and throwing only because the running game just didn't happen. And in the meantime, the Clemson offense really made Oklahoma's front seven pay. Give it up to Clemson. It, it, it was certainly a demonstration of why they are the only undefeated team in FBS football and why they have a shot at history. They got a shot going 15-0. Never happened before in college football. And if they beat Michigan State or Alabama on Monday, January 11th in Glendale, Arizona, that's going to happen. Dabo Sweeney is one of the best coaches in college football. Um, and remember, the Tigers had to replace much of that front seven. A lot of them went to the NFL not to mention the fact that the offensive line was fairly new as well. And cohesiveness, yeah, they got it. So tip your hat to Clemson. That third quarter, they owned it. And for the Oklahoma Sooners, chances that they had in that third quarter were few and far between. But the chances they did they, that they did have, yeah, didn't take advantage of them. Okay, 23-17, to 17, you're down six. You know, Clemson's missed a field goal. 
Um, and, and that's another thing to keep in mind, too. Clemson really could have made a true dent on that scoreboard and made it look like, you know, maybe the USC game from a few years ago when, oh, you got smashed 55-19. Clemson had chances for touchdowns, didn't get them. And missed a field goal in the third quarter to keep it at a six-point Tiger lead. Sooners moving the ball. They're in Clemson territory. Third and three. Micaiah Quick has an opportunity at a first down, but instead is moving laterally, bicycling back instead of just moving forward. He stopped the yard short. And on fourth and short, you give it to a banged-up P. Ryan on a misdirection kind of play in which Mayfield, you know, he, he, veers, he veers out of the pocket and, you know, P. Ryan gets the snap and Clemson was waiting for him saying, come on. Uh, Clemson had a ton of yardage in this game, but especially on the ground. And when that happens, what happens? you got to put more players in the box if you're the Sooners, and then you get the man-to-man -man coverage schemes that you want if you're the Clemson offense. And that's when Watson really took advantage of the corners for the Sooners. For Oklahoma, the reason why they got to this national championship semifinal, reason why they got to the Final Four, reason why they won the Big 12, reason why they looked like a different team after the Texas loss and won seven in a row, was because they were balanced, because the ground game did its part. And I said that if OU's going to win this game, it's got to be the ground game, because that will lead to Mayfield going to work. And it made it harder for Mayfield to go to work. And, and trust me, you know, Mayfield didn't have his best game either, okay? I know stat-wise it's not going to look too bad on the sheet, but there are some plays that maybe the stat sheet doesn't show. Um, when OU in the second quarter was driving, and I think it was – I think it was um, – I want to say it was 13-7, to Clemson. And OU's got it in the red zone. And it's third down. They're getting close to the goal line. He's got Andrews open. And Mayfield's pass didn't have a lot of zip on it. And it allowed Clemson to break up the play. And there was a situation in the third quarter where Westbrook has this guy beat, the corner beat. And that didn't happen too often because Clemson's corners can play. But there was a situation where, you know, Westbrook has his guy beat by two steps. And the pass by Mayfield kind of hangs in the air and allows um, the corner to break up the play. And that's a play where Stoops thought it was interference. Lobbying for a call. Didn't happen. And by the way, I know that refs are human, but this was not the best officiated game toward either team. I mean, remember, OU's opening drive was aided by a pass interference penalty, and I didn't think it was, but it helped the Sooners. Um, there was one play, and I know it was late in the second half, and, and, and I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference, but to give you an example – where Clemson clips um, an OU defender on, on a play, you know, in the in the red zone. Referees decide to pick the flag up. To me, it looked like clipping. I mean, why did you throw the flag to begin with? Um, but that's not why OU lost, okay? The penalties aren't why. Um, the game was won in the trenches by the Tigers. Give them all the credit in the world. Give them all the credit. They deserved it. And Michigan State or Alabama, whoever they face in the National Championship game, Spartans are tied going to have their hands full because you got to be able to stop at least a two-headed monster in Gallman, the running back, and, of course, um, Deshaun Watson, the quarterback. For the Sooners, it's a terrific season, but it was one where they kind of went back to their days of September where the offense didn't have much flow, and there wasn't much flow at all. Even when the Sooners were up by one point at halftime, second half, Clemson moved the ball at will. And that was an indication of what was to come. It was an indication of what was to come for the remainder of the half, and Sooners looked like they ran out of gas. So maybe it was something that Sooner fans should have expected in the second half. Not because OU wasn't going to try, but because there wasn't much in the tank. This is my final post-game show of the season. I'm looking ahead to 2016, I don't know if I'm going to do a uh, show on the new recruits for the Sooners. If I do, it'll be in February. If I do look ahead at... The future for the Sooners, 17 starters are going to be back um, unless some of those juniors decide to go to the NFL. But you do have Mayfield back for 2016. Um, you have a lot of offensive linemen coming back. You have some talented receivers back, but Sterling Shepard won't be one of them. He's run out of eligibility. Thank you for a great career, Sterling, and thanks to Eric Stryker, you know, that's the outstanding defensive player. Um, and I know there's other seniors um, that definitely deserve uh, praise as well. But those are two that immediately hit my head um, as I close out this show. 
2016 schedule will give the Sooners an opportunity to maybe get back to this point, but it's so tough because you're not guaranteed it. The non-conference schedule will have, I think, Houston and Ohio State, two teams that are, you know, are have or are already playing in major bowl games, and Houston beat Florida State. So Todd, you know, Tom Herman has that club in, in Houston in the right direction, and that's who the Sooners, I think, will either lead off with next year or will have on their non-conference schedule. But it helps you get Baylor and OSU at home in Kansas State. you got to go to TCU and West Virginia. And then, of course, you deal with Texas and Dallas. But thanks to all that have watched my blogs, including this one, um, Oklahoma Sooner fans, be proud of this Final Four appearance. But understand that, uh, that, that there's a reason why Clemson is undefeated. And they had more balance. And I'll rephrase it. They had balance. And they've had balance all year. And I know you found out the hard way. And I guess... You know, until proven otherwise, Clemson is now a new thorn in the side for the Sooners, just like USC has been for years, for the most part, like Miami has been. I mean, oh, you plays very well against Florida State and Alabama when it comes to USC, Miami, and, and Clemson. Third time since I've been a serious college football watcher, you know, since the 80s, that OU has lost to Clemson. All three have been in bowl games, and all three have been in the state of Florida. And a big thanks as well to all you who are just general you know, college fans. Um, if you're a fan of Clemson, if you're a fan of, of any team that OU has faced this year and you've stuck with my blogs, thank you as well. Um, I appreciate uh, the views and for subscribing. And please subscribe if you um, haven't yet. I do plan on having some OU basketball um, blogs. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet because I know the Sooners right now are really kicking some serious tail on the hard court. They got Iowa State and Kansas coming up this weekend. Sooners are right now number two or number three in the polls. Michigan State lost this past week to Iowa, so OU very well could move up to number one in the coaches or still remain at number two in the coaches and might move up to number two in the AP. But Sooners got two juggernaut games coming up um, to open up 2016. Should be a lot of fun. Found the Orange Bowl. Sooners fall short. Clemson, they deserve it. Congratulations to the Tigers. And for OU, they close out the year 11-2. Nothing to apologize about. But they fall two games shy of their eighth national championship. But there is enough talent and a tough enough schedule non-conference-wise to where, you know, if they play hard and can figure out a way to get back to that balance that we saw for the most part in 2015, no reason why OU can't get back to the Final Four and play in either Tempe or in Atlanta who will host the two semifinal games next year. Of course, championship game in 2017, or the 2016 season, we played in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Great year for the Sooners, but it comes to an end in Miami, courtesy of Clemson. And again, congratulations to the Tigers. Hope you can win the national championship. So long.